Uh, I started pottery about four years ago at adult education classes in Grays End and uh, soon got frustrated by how slow it, how long it took to get a pot back. You know, you glaze it and you wait for it to be fired and you go the next week and it, it wouldn't be ready. So I got frustrated and ended up getting my own wheel and kiln and, and doing it from home. So these are the sort of things that I was doing at adult education classes. This is slab building. And so I was making these and learning to throw on the wheel, which is, you just have to be so determined to learn how to do that. And even now, <coughs> I can throw up one day and then go to the wheel the next and not be able to centre the clay in the middle when it's all over the place. But I keep at it and I struggle. And, and sometimes the ones that are going to fail are the ones that are more interesting. You get some really interesting shapes out of them. Before I did pottery, I was doing painting lessons, and uh, it was the bits, the mistakes that people liked, the, the mistakes that I made that people picked up and said, I really like what you've done there, and they were complete mistakes. So, you know, never be put off by what you think you've done because other people might love it. So, uh, I was doing, I'm still going to adult education classes because there's so much to learn about pottery, about great making glazes, and so many different techniques to make pot. So I'm still learning four years later and, and will probably be for the rest of my life. Um, so I then, um, so went out, bought the kiln, bought all the glaze materials, was determined to make my own glazes and become, you know, people would want to buy my glazes. That was my idea. And then I heard about raccoon firing. And um, with raccoon, what you do is you fire the pot to a thousand degrees you glaze it, you semi-glaze it, you glaze parts of it. Before glaze on, then you fire it to a thousand degrees, take it out and put it in a bucket of um, newspaper and sawdust and it bursts into flames. You put a lid on it and the fire looks for oxygen in the clay and the glaze and you get these special effects. And the bit that isn't glazed goes black. The carbon from the smoke goes into the clay and turns it black. So you get this, um, if you've glazed the whole pot, you get this cracks in the pots and they turn black as well so you get that special effect from that. So that was really exciting, you know, all the flames and the fire was really interesting. And then I heard about um, saga firing which is uh, potters used to put their pots in a clay box to protect it from the fumes of the oil fired and wood fired kilns, it kept it white. And somebody, uh, uh, a Scottish woman, tested putting materials in the pot with the clay and it gave these special effects. The materials evaporated and put the colours and stains on the clay. So that's what I'm doing at the moment. The only thing is that to, um, when you do it, because it's, it, it's fired really quickly, it heats up really quickly, the kiln heats up quickly and then cools down quickly, it cracks the pots. So I had loads of pots that cracked, 50% at least of my pots were cracking. And I realised that it was because there was no grog in the clay, there was no grit. So if you add grit to the clay, it allows it to expand and retract and not crack. So I put all the, cro the cracked bits to one side and then heard about Kintsugi, which is a Japanese philosophy where they repair their pot with resin and gold, like a fine gold. And that becomes part of the history and the character of the pot. So I thought, well, how can I do that? And this is, um, it's like the makeup that women wear on their face, it's like a really fine powder mixed with glue and the pot's glued together and it kind of adds, this one's a bit too much, it's gone a bit over the salt and cracked. <laughs> it was a lovely pot, it's a shame it cracked, but, so it's a bit leery now. But one of the things that I did was I was um, trying to make a stone, I had this idea, oh, I can make a stone out of clay. And I don't know if you ever done it, make pinch pots, you get a lump of clay and you just pinch a bowl out. And this is two of them sort of stuck together. And as I was making it, I was talking to someone on Facebook and they were having a panic attack. They put it on Facebook. And I was, I'd suffered myself with anxiety and had therapy. And one of the things they asked me to do was hold a stone. Imagine I was by the sea or by a, a pond, somewhere relaxing. And you hold the stone and it reminds you of that place. And then when you're out and you have a, a panic attack, you hold that stone 
you put it in your pocket, and whenever you have a panic attack, you touch it. It reminds you to practice your breathing techniques and visualisation, so go somewhere, calm down, sit somewhere nice. And um, I was doing, I was doing the, uh, the sag of firing, and then I made the stones, and I thought if I put the two of them together, I'll have a beautiful object that you can you know, admire, and it's got a purpose as well. And a lot of people have bought them, I'm really pleased with how they're going, it's really... So to get that finish on the, on the stones and on the pots, you have to burnish them. You have to burnish the outside with the stone, because there's no glaze on these pots. It's just, that's the clay and the colour's gone into the clay. There's a bit of wax polished afterwards, but it comes out like that anyway. It's just cleaned up with a bit of wax polish. And that's hours of work. You know, it's, this is my stone, it's the only stone that I can use. And I just sit there like that for hours as it's drying. So as it's getting to leather hard, you can do that. And it pushes the grog into the clay and leaves a fine film on the outside. You put it down, and as it dries, it goes matte again, so you pick it up and move from. I probably do the whole pot like that probably five or six times to get before it's bone dry. Then they're bisque fires in an electric kiln to a thousand degrees. On this pot, every now and again you'll get something to occur in the clay. On this pot, there's a, a figure, I think it's a, a Chinese guy, uh, like a, a paddy rice worker, paddy field rice worker. Um, be careful with this pot because it's my latest pot and I love it. So on this pot, there is, where is she? The Greek goddess. <laughs> She's hiding, she's here somewhere, there she is. A Greek goddess, a polar bear, some koi carp, and various other bits and pieces. So, if you look on, you can try anything in the kiln. This is a TV aerial from my wall. <laughs> so the the brown, light brown is my wall, and the black line is uh, TV aerial. I did another one with four on it, and it was much better, but that's so um, but you can try anything at all. I tried um, a feed that you use for potatoes. I put that in, in with a, a pot that was wrapped in wire. And the food stained the clay grey, but wouldn't go near the copper wire. So where the copper wire was, which leaves the black lines that you see on the pot, so that is black lines, and it went up to the black line and then stopped. So there was a grey pot with black lines around it with white lines around either side of that black line. It was just beautiful. Another thing that you can use is horse hair and sugar. Uh, so you just drop them on, you have to take them out and do it at a certain temperature. Too hot and the horse hair burns off completely. Too cold and it doesn't burn at all. So um, that's horse hair and sugar on that one. Um, I, I noticed none of them have got that Chinese stamps on them. The, 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 the mark on there is my mark. I was trying to make JK, a lot of potters put their initials on the pot. And I tried to make JK, and despite me being able to make all of this, I could not make JK. <laughs> so the oil barrel is, yeah. um, it has a chimney that goes down the side of it and in the bottom, and it causes a draw. When it gets to a certain temperature, it sucks the air into it, so it fires hotter than it normally would. Yeah. And that's really the, the most fun, because <clears throat> when you go there in the morning, it's just ashes. It's, you build it up in layers, so there's a grill, you put newspaper over the top of it, put some sawdust down, some wood, some newspaper, some pots wrapped in silver foil with the materials I've spoken about. That. Each pot is wrapped in, well, most of the time, it's wrapped in silver foil with banana skin, seaweed, sawdust, um, actually anything that you can think of that might put a mark on onto the plate. Plus, plus um, chemicals as well, cobalt. Um, Copper oxide, copper chrome, copper oxide, copper carbonates, um, different types of irons. Um, there's just anything that you can think of, put in there, and it might put a pattern or a colour on there. And but not too much carbon. If you put anything too much sawdust or too much seaweed, it'll go black. Some people smoke fire, and they just want that carbon and they fire the pots a number of times and they, in between the firing they mask off the bits that they don't want as dark as the others and we can get some interesting effects. The things that you can do with pottery, the different techniques, it's just endless, which is what's so interesting about it. This is a really special pot. 
So this was fired about three or four times, and it wasn't until the last time that it came out that we had this scene. And this is copper wire. I don't know what that is. Red from red, but it's really interesting. But on both sides, a different, different Japanese than the Japanese scene. Probably. Do you feel different? I do today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.